Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is a weekend review for the week ending December 2nd, 2022. November close is in the book. We're looking at a weekly chart of the S&P 500. Um, yeah, we could certainly see a pullback. And I think it's pretty obvious um, as to why. Right now, the ADX is saying there is no trend here. Um, but again, I will go back to the 2020 lows. Same thing happened here. You did get your pullback into the 10. The 10 is sloping up. That then allowed ADX to start going higher. So a pullback into the 10 is kind of what I'm looking for. I got The bears got to get through uh, the 20, though, to make that happen. It's entirely possible they could just go inside and bull flag. Um, I'm not making any predictions here. I'm just saying price has now hit this trend line which is what we were looking for, and a declining weekly 50. Uh, that being said, has now closed three sessions above the 200 on the daily after being below it um, for the majority of 2022. Um, what The way I like to play this, you know, just to give you a rundown, take all the indicators, all the momentum, all that stuff off the charts, and you have an ascending channel into this declining trend line. Okay, this gap has not been filled here at 410.95. There's a gap up here, there's a gap up here, um, there's a gap up here, right? So these things can, can continue and act as magnets, but it doesn't mean they're going to get filled. Really what the gap just means is that's a future place for potential supplier demand and when we're talking about these gaps we're talking about supply and so while she is in this ascending channel the way i view it is you hold your longs you look for stocks that are outperforming that are rotating and ride them until they stop going higher let's run through the list here's iwm same story Hitting this downtrend line. Now this is the fourth tag. You don't want four tags. That's that's not how it works, um, right? You, you kind of you want the second tag, the first tag. You definitely don't want the third or fourth. That being said, ascending channel still in the channel. As long as she's in this channel, you can remain long. That's that's how I view it. Uh, pulling up the indicators here. ADX is curling up now. Um, one thing I do see is a potential for a triangle here, a descending triangle, but until she gets below the 20, right? It's not it's not something you want to talk about. You don't talk about bearish patterns while the slope of the 20 is up, while the slope of the 10 is up on the weekly, and she's above all of these moving averages, especially EMA5. Um, so yeah, you look for higher prices in this configuration. Now, this is the one to third attempt at a declining 50. So if momentum and volume come in next week or in December, um, this thing can scream higher to 202, uh, if not 212. That's kind of what I'm looking at before some type of pullback or sideways price action. But again, while price is in this channel, you look for things to go higher. QQQ does not have that same channel. QQQ is very weak. QQQ is below the 20, sorry, below the 200. Um, did capture the 20. You're getting the slope of the 20 to curl up now, the slope of the 50 to curl up, and the bottom of the band is finally pointing up. You do have a bottom pattern here, inverse head and shoulders. And as long as price remains above that 284 level, this is a valid bottoming pattern. That's our neckline. Once she captured the neckline, just to talk about the structure here of the short term pattern, you see this is a bull flag pattern that has not hit the target. The target of this pattern is up here somewhere between 311 and 322 gap fills. Continues to be the weakest of the sectors. 
and is approaching this down downward sloping macro downtrend that's been in place all of 2022. You're starting to see a, a theme here. SMH is outside that pattern, outside that macro downtrend. Same bull flag pattern here, can continue to go sideways for three to four more weeks. ADX is now pointing up. Um, and you're getting this bull flag structure here at and below the 200. However you wanna draw it is totally up to you. That's why these patterns are subjective. Um, but we're in an uptrend it's entirely possible that price continues to go sideways until it December 20 until the end of the year. Right? I mean that would frustrate the most market participants. Bears calling for new lows, bulls calling for new highs. Um, sideways action keeps this bull flag pattern valid. That is a valid bull flag. Okay, and as we keep moving along, so XLEs put in a new high, put in a reversal candle, no real volume, and is pulled back into the five. The daily is showing a diamond top to me. PPO is resetting to zero, which is very healthy. But this type of um, configuration has me looking for a symmetrical move back down to this level. You're in a correction. And this is the range. And until she can get above this range, you're at the top of the range. And when you're in range trading, range trading rules say you sell at the top, you buy at the bottom. Is what it is. That's where we're at with XLE. XLF, on the other hand, is above this downtrend um, and marching higher. So this you could definitely call range bound as well. And so until she can really get above this $36 level sideways action is in order and she could stay sideways for a long time right and still have this long this big bull flag but XLF is leading higher and is above the macro downtrend same thing with Dow Jones industrial average and these things tend to lead just like SMH tends to lead when you look at these on the daily and the weekly they're above all the moving averages histograms positive ADX is pointing up with price. Um, yeah, this, there's nothing wrong with this. Now, they get back below 330, get back below 325. We got to reassess. But right now, the trend is up, and this can continue a lot longer than most people think. And taking a look at bonds, everyone's doing victory laps on bonds. Hey, bonds are finally going up. Sure looks like a dead cat bounce within the context of a strong downtrend. It's so strong, it's just now at a declining EMA5 on the monthly. That being said, it's entirely possible that this period here was the low. How will we know? Price will escape this downtrend. You see this downtrend that it's been in all year long? Still in the downtrend until she can escape this descending channel. And what's gonna have to happen is she's gonna have to come up here, fill this gap and go sideways. And then she's gonna come all the way back down and do a retracement of the recent move somewhere into this zone that we talk about all the time. After coming back down into here, then you may see risk off, then you may see risk off. Not now, not off the low. Everyone's bias is so strong. So let's just keep an open mind. Let's look at the patterns. Let's look at momentum and see what they say. This is a descending channel. It has not escaped this channel. Um, and until she does, 
there's nothing to talk about. Now I will say, this is a lot of covering here. This volume looks good. But look back here, you had the same amount of volume and then you had new sellers. And really the reason for this chart doing what it's doing is this chart, TNX. And TNX is still in a healthy uptrend. And until she can get below the 20, close below this uptrend, there's nothing in terms of a um, lasting top to brag about. This is still extremely strong. Now you do have your bearish divergences in momentum and price. As we've talked about many times, there's a TD9139 sell setup. Um, but right now she's just at a rising 20. She's at the 20. This is an uptrend. And so you've got to look at the big picture and say this is likely where bulls will play defense. Now if they can get below these levels here, really this 320 gap, that 303 gap, if they can come down here, rally back up, go sideways for a while, you then will see the decline that everyone wants to see that will enable bonds to do that risk off thing. But until that happens, you still just have an uptrend. Let's take a look at some of the leaders and then we'll wrap this video up. EMPH continues to lead. Weekly PPO bull cross, ADX rising above 30 with price, moving averages right where you need to see them. Daily bull flag pattern still in play target for this bull flag pattern is a lot higher all right um, at minimum 450 um, possibly 600 and again this isn't a prediction this is just what the pattern is telling me is possible um, it's also possible this is a uh, fake out breakout every breakout takes more than one day to confirm so must give it time Nvidia is still in this ascending channel, very easy trade. As long as she's in this channel, she will head towards this downtrend. And this is where you look to liquidate um, some positions. And for this potential left shoulder, head shoulder, right shoulder, bottoming pattern. Um, ADX is pointing up, uh, ADX on the daily above 30, still in this ascending channel. And there's a lot of overhead supply. <clears throat> But um, the ascending channels are very easy to play. Crocs, another stock that we've been watching and, and uh, has been outperforming for some time. Big bottoming pattern, left shoulder, head shoulder, right shoulder, volume confirms. Target for this bottoming pattern, 160s. Uh, any pullbacks into 90 to 86 are strong buys. CGC, another name that we've been playing, finally hit the 200. Um, weekly 20 is, is sloping up now. Weekly 10 sloping up. Um, they're basically the same price. They're, 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 this volume shelf is insane. Um, this is how things uh, this is how you get accumulation. Large decline pattern, just like TLT, huge decline pattern, break above, go sideways. Okay, and that's how you build this profile. Uh, you need a lot of volume at a particular price range. And that's what you have here. Again, nothing to get excited about until she can get acceptance above this 430 level. The close was 429. No accidents, no coincidences. And right now, just price at a declining 200. Cron is another one in this in this MJ group. Uh, finally breaking these long-term downtrends, capturing the 200. ADX confirming higher price. Close above the top of the week of the daily bands. Close above the top of the weekly bands. Captured week a declining 50. This is a change in character, but you still just have the decline into accumulation phase until price can get above this 360 level. 
we're going to take a look at <clears throat> SPY versus TLT ratio is finally adjusting. But again, has this changed anything? Nope. Still in an uptrend. If we look at the stocks and how they've performed, um, Bitcoin, Tesla, SPACs, they're underperforming. Um, NEO and CRISPR have been doing pretty well, but for Q4, they are still underperforming. TNX and the dollar, underperforming. TLT is up 5% on the quarter. CGC is up almost 60%. Crocs up 51%. NVIDIA, APA, Exxon, Cron, KWEB, ENPH. These are the names that are leading. And these are the names that will likely continue to lead because they've been leading all quarter long. Take a look at some reports real quick. NIAM exposure still really, really low. PCE declines to the lowest level since last December. Um, markets rally when inflation peaks. This is one metric that the uh, Fed is using. People care less and less about inflation now because it seems to have run its course. GDP forecast continues to decline. Uh, so many breadth thrusts. Um, here, here's another one. Percentage of stocks above the 50-day. Dow Jones versus Russell um, is suggesting that rotation into the Russell is possible. And two straight months with greater than 5% return for the S&P 500 since 1970s happened five previous times. The average price change was greater than 23% each time. So that's all I got for this video. I hope you like it. We'll see you next week.